Hi, this is Rev Ed with today's Back Porch Devotional from Psalm 18. Psalm 18 is one of the longest psalms. Uh, it has 50 verses, and you'll be delighted to know that we're not going to read all 50 of them this morning. I'm going to try and work through the first half today and the second half tomorrow. And again, we're not going to read every verse. We're just going to read selected verses. But I want to also tell you something about the background of this psalm. In addition to being one of the longest psalms, it has one of the longest titles of all of the psalms. It says this, To the choir master, a psalm of David, the servant of the Lord, who addressed the words of this song to the Lord on the day when the Lord rescued him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. Now, these words from this psalm are sung by David near the end of his life. It's in 2 Samuel. But it is clear that he may have either composed this when he was younger, at the time when he finally became king and put everybody beneath him, or at the end of his life he's just reflecting on all the things that God has done for him and all the things that God has delivered him from. But listen to these words. I love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised and I am saved from my enemies. In the first couple of verses here, David uses in the Hebrew nine different names, titles for God strength, rock, fortress, deliverer, shield, horn, salvation, stronghold. This is an outpouring of absolute praise. And this is not praise to a God that David has only heard about. This is a close relationship that David is expressing. The first line, I love you, O Lord. This is highly rare language uh, in the Old Testament for someone to speak of their relationship with the Lord in this fashion. We think of it as something that's natural, but that's only because this intimacy with God has been revealed to us in Jesus Christ. But out of all the Old Testament, David's relationship with the Lord was indeed special. He was, as we know, a man after God's own heart. And what you see here is somebody who knows God, who not just knows about God. David was not so much a student of scripture as he was a student of the Lord himself. He loved God and he acknowledged God. And he, despite all of his faults and his many failings, he turned to God again and again and again. And so all these descriptive words for God, all these different things that illustrate who God is for David, reflect God, David's deep, deep ongoing relationship with the Lord. And this is something that is offered to all of us, especially now in Christ. And it is something that our lives are made richer by when we take advantage of it. We are built for intimate communion with the Lord and nothing else on this earth will actually satisfy us. If we just need to understand that. All these twisted desires that we have for money or fame or power or, you know, pleasure that we use to fill us up. It's all a poor substitute for what we are designed for, which is a relationship with the Lord himself. But this is a song of praise for deli of deliverance that David is celebrating. He says, I call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised and I am saved from my enemies. The cords of death encompassed me. The torrents of destruction assailed me. The cords of Sheol entangled me. The snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord. To my God, I cried for help. From his temple, he heard my voice, and my cry to him reached his ears. David was a mighty warrior, and he was a king, but he never hesitated to call out to God. He called out to God both in praise and for help, and he is praising God for the help that he received in, on previous occasions. And then he uses this really descriptive language to show how God responded to his prayer. He says, Then the earth reeled and rocked. The foundations of the mountains also trembled and quaked because he was angry. 
Smoke went up from his nostrils and devouring fire from his mouth. Glowing coals flamed forth from him. He bowed the heavens and came down. Thick darkness was under his feet. He rode on a cherub and flew. He came swiftly on the wings of the wind. The Lord thundered in the heavens and the Most High uttered his voice, hailstones and coals of fire. He sent out his arrows and scattered them. They flashed forth lightnings and routed them. The channels of the sea were seen and the foundations of the world laid bare. He sent from on high. He took me, he drew me out of many waters. He rescued me from my strong enemy and from those who hated me, for they were too mighty for me. They confronted me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my support. He brought me out into a broad place. He rescued me because he delighted in me. In these words, David depicts God as the divine warrior coming to do battle for David. And this is an image that we don't hear much of these days. We don't think of God as a warrior. We talk about God being love. But what we have to remember is that God is a God of justice and he is a God of holiness. And he is the one who will ultimately deal with all of the unholiness and injustice that is out there in the world. And so David uses this descriptive language that illustrates the anger of the Lord, the righteous indignation of the Lord against evil. And it's full of things like lightning and thunder and hail and storm clouds. And so David looks at the world around him and sees these storms that we see in nature as an illustration of the anger of God being expressed on David's behalf and on behalf of all who are oppressed. And that's a fun thing to remember the next time we see a ferocious storm. It's an illustration of God's holiness, his righteousness, and his desire that things would be set right. God goes to war on behalf of his people. Now we know in the coming of Jesus Christ that war took a different form, that our Lord allowed himself to be killed by his enemies. He freely offered himself up on the cross, which was not the kind of battle they were expecting. And yet it is a battle that has been won in the heavens and on earth for us forever. David says, I was blameless before him and I kept myself from my guilt. So the Lord has rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands in his sight. With the merciful, you show yourself merciful. With the blameless, you show yourself blameless. With the purified, you show yourself pure. But with the crooked, you make yourself seem tortuous. David is not at all claiming that he was perfect, but he is saying that he has strived to keep the Lord's path. And he's showing what kind of God that he is dealing with. And this is the kind of God who is available to us, the one who comes when we cry for help, the one who fights our battles for us, the one who comes to deliver us in a time of trouble. My prayer for you this day is that you would know God the way David knew God, that you would understand that he is your rock and your fortress and your deliverer, your salvation and your shield, your strength. Whatever you're facing this day, the Lord is beside you with it. And there is nothing that he is not strong enough to handle. As Paul writes in the eighth chapter of Romans, if God is for us, who can be against us? Know indeed that God in Christ is for you this day and that he will fight for you. And indeed, at the cross, he fought and won the ultimate victory over sin and death and hell itself, so that we don't need to fear any of the battles we are facing today. God's blessings be upon you today.